Hi everybody, welcome to the channel, Thailand Dreaming. Love letters from retirement. Uh, today I'm with uh, Edwin, who is the principal of the uh, Wildlife Friends Foundation in Thailand. And uh, he has a huge rescue centre here for all sorts of animals from Thailand. Monkeys rescued from uh, coconut farming and elephants that have been uh, working and uh, most likely treated very badly over a period of time. So I guess the first question uh, for me, and I guess for many others, why? Yeah, I came to Thailand in 1989, so that's uh, by now 32 years ago. Um, I was actually surprised to see elephants in the wild. I was living here at least six years already in the mm -hmm. country. I heard, of course, about stories of elephants in the wild, but I, I never saw them. And on a trip, actually living in Cha'am, near Hua Hin. Uh, Cha'am is like a very dormant little town near Hua Hin, for those people that don't know where it is. <laughs> and um, I drove up to Palau to see the waterfall. And somehow I got stuck a bit longer than, than usual. And on my way back, uh, there was a herd of elephants, wild elephants, about 30 of them on the middle of the road at 5.30 in the afternoon or almost early evening. And I just couldn't believe my eyes. I saw the elephant poo in the past, but I always made jokes about it saying, well, it's probably the tourist authority of Thailand that's been putting the poo out. <laughs> Going to the jungle at Kengacha National Park, which became for me an almost weekly event on days off to go there. I saw gibbons. I saw once a bear and I couldn't believe there were bears in mm -hmm. Thailand. Um, and you know, one day I even had the, um, the luck of seeing a black leopard crossing wow. the road until one day I saw a tiger and I was like, what the hell is this? So I got a bit of obsessed with going to the jungle. Kanka Chan in the early days wasn't as busy as it is nowadays. In the old days, you actually on Friday afternoon, if you went a bit earlier, before the herds from Bangkok would come in. And, and we're talking in those days, maybe 15 or 20 cars maximum. Mm -hmm. You had the first trip, you saw the most wildlife. So I got earlier into the forest all the time, saw more and more of Thailand's beautiful wildlife. But when I came out of the forest, I would see people having a monkey at home on a chain or a bear in a little cage. Um, you know, the craziest kind of uh, wildlife pets that people kept. I also understood that for rich people, government officials, corrupt people, criminals, um, there was something called barami, which basically means um, making yourself look strong, powerful, um, by keeping illegally uh, some of these wild animals as pets at home. Um, it's not, it was not in those days. Uh, strange to have somebody seeing a, a tiger or a bear in the backyard. Nowadays people go for much more exotic animals, people having a chimpanzee at home or a orangutan oh. or a lion. Lions yeah. at the moment is a big hit. So I saw this and I just realized after having a car accident in 1999, we're talking 10 years later, that there was no rescue facility available in our area, actually in the whole of Thailand. So I decided to set one up and that got, as you can see, completely out of hand. <laughs> Completely out of hand. I think you do an absolutely wonderful job. Now, uh, as you said to me last night, you own the land. Well, your company owns the, the land. The foundation does, yes. Yeah. So you've invested uh, as well as the huge amount of time you put in here. You've invested quite a bit of money in this as well. Yeah. And I can't see it being a profitable <laughs> a profitable uh, it's, it's, situation. It the, just supports the animals. It's it, we're talking about uh, seventy six hectares of land for the, for the women watching and for the men watching. That's about one hundred fifty football fields, yeah. soccer fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a massive area. Yeah. We we house over seven hundred animals here. Uh, anything from little night monkeys up to bears, chimpanzee, orangutan, even the largest ones, the elephants. And with this, of course, uh, with all these huge amount of animals, you need a lot of space for it, you need to have enclosures for these animals, you have safety issues, you need of course food for the animals, which um, is, is a lot of money, you need staff to feed and clean and look after the animals, we have a medical team, we have in an ambulance, um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge operation, and to be very honest, in the early years when I started it, it was really fun working with the animals directly. Nowadays, I'm more or less a manager again, running a factory like I used to do before yeah, I did this. Yeah, yeah. So the fun is a little bit gone. Yeah. So basically, basically, what drove you to to start this was 
your compassion for the cruelty. Yeah, it, it actually, you, 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 asked it, you asked it right, what drove you to it? Actually, I drove into a ditch. <laughs> I had a, an almost uh, death experience having a car accident in October 1999. And I uh, survived that, as you can see. Um, I was thrown out of the front of the car. I still have a couple of scars on my body from that accident. And working in the fashion industry at that moment in Thailand, I realized that my life was pretty one-sided. It's all about making money. You work your, your ass off, actually, to make that extra money. You have uh, a lot of people working for you, but there's no fun to it. Mm -hmm. At the same time that I had the accident, somebody gave me my first monkey uh, to take care of. Some Falang guys, some expatriate in Uwehin who bought a monkey for his uh, girlfriend at that time, couldn't take care of it. And I took care of it, took it to my house, built an enclosure, I got some more from a rescue organization in Bangkok and slowly more animals came to live around my house that I took care of and eventually there was a point of no return. I couldn't give them up to another organization because there was none, so yeah. I had to build something for them. Uh -uh. Yeah. I've been to another elephant sanctuary here in Kanchanaburi and all the elephants were chained. The yeah. thing that strikes me here and I had a good walk around yesterday. The thing that strikes me here is the wonderful surroundings the elephants have, and they're not entrapped anywhere. I see some you put in their Exciting corrals, corrals. The corrals That's only for the night. That's at, only for the night sick, yeah. And so, so, so basically, when the problem is with elephants, I have, for example, this large enclosure with over ten elephants living free. At night, I have to separate them. If I don't separate them, they won't lay down and sleep. Uh -huh. They don't get a proper rest. They do lie down? Elephants do lay down in the wild, yes. But in the wild, all the females are in one family group. Uh -huh. They all know each other. They're all related to each other. There's a hierarchy in there. Yeah. And they trust each other. Yeah. These animals come from many different places, are of many different ages, and they don't trust each other. So when they don't trust each other, they will not lay down. If they don't lay down, they don't get enough rest. And eventually, the lack of sleep will make them weaker and being weaker gets you sick. Yeah, so incredible. That's what have that. incredible. I'm amazed to know that they lie down. I wasn't sure, I've never seen an elephant uh, lying down. It's not easy down. to see it, but we have yeah. cameras everywhere so we can see it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an incredible thing you do here. I'm, um, I feel sort of uh, honored, you know, to be uh, speaking to you. Uh, I can't tell you the amount of respect and, and um, feeling I have about someone that does so much for oh, oh, it's basically unconditional love really for animals it's, I mean? it's, it's not just a love for animals I have a very strong feeling of injustice that keeps me going I think what we do to our planet what we do to the animals is a is a huge injustice to to nature and to our planet our home that we live on mm -hmm. And I do believe that um, by setting an example, we do here, especially in a country like Thailand, where animal welfare and wildlife conservation is still in the early days. Will they eat anything? Uh, no, that's not correct. I don't think that. No, <laughs> no, no, I'm no, joking. That would, be, <laughs> that would be not what I would like to uh, to see as the truth. No, but uh, no, I, I, I do, I do. Um, I'm with you on the fact that, um, of course, the choice of, of what people eat here is a lot more than what we would expect in Western culture. But then again, um, in countries like Australia, people eat. Um, uh, kangaroo meat and or crocodile meat, which for somebody in Europe is maybe really weird, while at the same time Europeans do eat uh, deer meat and, and munchak meat, for example. Yeah. Uh, in, 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 in other parts of the world, they have other exceptions and, and differences. But I think that the, the bottom line is that um, we need to stay away from uh, wild animals, consumption or exploitation of wild animals, especially when these animals are in danger. Yeah, and, and most certainly in Thailand, what astounds me is uh, there's a there's a cruelty factor and it's really strange coming from a country that is primarily Buddhist in their philosophy and their religion but uh, you'll see an animal suffering from a road accident or something like that on the side of the road no one will come and put it down they won't yeah, do I, that. I think this is an issue um, and I don't think religion is, is part of this I mean I'm a, I'm a very non-religious person I do treat all religions the same way I keep my hands off it and stay away from it. Uh -uh. That's my personal opinion. I think wisdom writ large. Uh, probably, um, I can live with it anyway that way. Yeah. Um, euthanasia in this country is a difficult issue. It's a cultural issue more than a religious issue. But I do believe that where necessary, most of the times the newer generation are okay with it. Yeah, I think I think things are getting better. Yeah. People are yeah. becoming more and more educated. 
But, um, you know, I, I really want to thank you for everything you've, you know, the, the stories you told me last night and the yeah. information you've given me. And uh, I'm going to try and uh, whip up some donations, of course, through this uh, yeah. these couple of YouTube uh, videos. I don't have a huge amount of followers, but it's growing. That might still come. That might still come. It's growing I'm, every month. You say you said you're thankful for being here. I'm actually thankful for people that are interested in our work that want to come and have a look what we do here. Um, I'm the privileged one here. I get to do what I want to do. I get to live the dream of of running a place like this and, and seeing it grow. Um, which, of course, in reality, I don't want this place to get bigger. I hope eventually that we come to a point where there's no need for a place like this anymore. Well, so it, it's an amazing thing to see because, I mean, obviously, you're a doer. I mean, I have a lot of energy too, but I tend to consume my own energy. Mm -hmm. You put your energy into uh, action for the for all these animals and and to uh, to help save save them and doing your bit in a very big way for the planet and the environment and all our wildlife whereas I, i'm inherently lazy but at least i can do this and i'm doing something i'm doing out, yeah. something i'm playing a small small minor part you know if i can get someone to send five bucks It'll buy some food for a monkey for a couple of days. And, uh, of course, I'm sure here that uh, Edwin and the Foundation have huge amount of veterinary costs, huge amount of staff costs. I figured, what did you tell me last night? It cost 1.5 million baht a month. To keep the place running, we need 1.5 million baht, which is approximately um, $50,000 yeah. every month. A month, every um, month. And about 600,000 baht of that is uh, purely for food. We have 74 staff members in total. They also get paid. We have volunteers. They don't get paid, but they do get food and housing. Um, that's another, at the moment, about 10, 12 people. Well, that's also a cost it's because cost they use electricity, yeah. they use water, they yeah. they have somewhere to stay while they're here. And uh, unfortunately, nothing is for free. And, and I say, always jokingly say about my place, it's a, it's a hobby that got out, uh, got out of hand. <laughs> uh, now, veterinary cost. Do, uh, do you get vets that come here and volunteer their we, services? We do have volunteering vets, but we have a, a, a team here of three veterinarians on site. Mm -hmm. They are paid for it. Uh, they have a salary. We have two vet nurses. We have a driver for the ambulance. We have a brand new ambulance that was just um, donated yesterday. Fantastic. And you'll see that on the tour later on. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have a clinic then on the site that will be reopened in the 1st of December. It's a clinic for the spaying and the neutering of dogs and cats, for stray animals. That's between Chaan and Huahin. Well, that's incredibly and, uh, necessary. I'll be more than happy to, to show you around that place mm -hmm. in the next month uh, when you want to do another video. Yeah. Because you can see that there we um, we spay about 5,000 dogs and cats a year. Fantastic. Which stops the overpopulation of yeah. stray animals. Yeah. 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 Well, I really am uh, grateful for your time. I know you're incredibly busy. He gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Has all these staff meetings with the construction staff and then the park staff and the other staff, mm -hmm. and then all day up to Bangkok, down to Chum Chumpon, Chumpon, yeah. Chumpon, or somewhere picking up elephants in a truck. An incredibly busy man. He's given me his time and uh, he's been incredibly hospitable and I'm incredibly grateful and I ask any of you and I know a lot of my viewers are animal lovers I'll put a link for donations under the video and I'll put information about the park and if you come to Thailand especially if you come to Cha Am Hua Hin come and visit this place it is a really magical wonderful experience thanks so much thanks so much Edmund. much appreciated thank, thank you so much yep. thank you
Oh. That's the newest one. Um, his name is Richie. And then we have Mora, Dado, Mina, and Palabala in here. And these are all orphan snippets. So somebody picks up a Mora and Dado were both bought, bought by someone and then um, given to us because they thought, oh, I can't raise a uh, given by myself. I don't want it anymore. Um, same with Halabala. He was born to the wild and sold. Um, Hello. Um, these guys are called Lek and Yai. Lek? I don't know which one is which. Only when they stand next to each other. Yai. <laughs> yeah, they really like the inside pool. Oh, it's sleepy. It's sleepy. Look them all there. Sleepy. Bears are also quite nocturnal, so they are usually during the daytime just sleeping. Really? They don't stay in the cages. They have lovely little surroundings to get out and walk around and play in, but apparently the bears like to uh, get into their, their little house in the daytime when it's really hot because the floor's nice and cool and whatnot. Hard to film them because it's very dark in there and they're black, so yeah. But this is their, well, this is for this one has all this area here to play around in. In here are otters, but apparently they're still asleep somewhere. Who knows where? Don't know what we're looking at here. Oh, there's an otter there. There's one right there. Hello, little dude. Hello. So this is me, Dang. Me, Dang. Me, Dang. Me, Dang. Halay. Hamalay. Do they bite you? Yeah, they bite. Mm-mm. Um, so yeah, we're trying to match these two together. This one? Me, Dang, and this one? Yeah. Obviously, this is the girl because listen how much she's complaining. Oh, you wouldn't think otters can climb. Meow. 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 Where are you going? Bye, nay. Bye, nay. Bye, nay. So, Bye, nay. This otter here. You're very uh, smelly. She's absolutely sweet. And you can see how the baby's uh, playing in the trees and they play this game when they're young. Where they they hold on to one branch uh, with one hand and let themselves fall to 
catch on to the next one underneath. So they're always practicing for swinging. They like to play this game. Always the goal. This here is two house. This is where we practice the animal. This is the quarantine centre where new animals are kept until it's ascertained that they're healthy and won't cause any problems with the other animals. Over here, got a big team of. Uh, I just forgot to ask. Uh, Edwin how many people he has working here but quite a lot but this is the where all the food is prepared by volunteers and people that work here for all the monkeys and other small animals the elephants eat larger quantities of food